Good evening from New York. I am Selwyn Collins, your host of CWS As It Is. CWS As It Is was created as a platform to give Guyanese an opportunity to talk about matters concerning Guyana. Eventually, we'll evolve this throughout the region and then throughout the world. But for now, I think our country needs this kind of forum. This is the first for the year, and it is only fitting that we begin with some of the youths of Guyana. But before I start the show, I would like to acknowledge the passing of one of Guyana's daughters, Dr. Faith Harding. She was a gem, a counselor, friend, mentor, teacher, and to many of us, a sister. I cannot express enough what a blow this is to me, so I can only imagine those much closer to her. So I ask that you please join me in a moment of silence to honor the memory of Dr. Harding. And she had stripped herself of everything else and it began there Selwyn and the moment sort of expanded because as as it went around the room then it honed in on another uh, hub member Gregory Shaw and, and the thing about Gregory is this whenever you ask Gregory how can I show you some love you know how can I support you Gregory says you can show me some love by asking me for support and it was right there in that meeting that I realized how, how lucky I was to be with these people. Mm -hmm. And between Anika and Greg and all the other shapers, they really showed me that, you know, there's so much more you can do and we're, we're here for you. So for the first time in my life, I was in a space where I felt at home, where I felt understood and where finally I could rest my mind and I could begin to really think about solutions for our country. And you, Yafet. It, it was the day that I met the, the first cohort. Um, I walked into the room, and this was, this was a Pegasus, wasn't it? Um, yeah, we had a first, a very first meeting after the first one was selected. And I'm sitting in the room, and I'm looking around these other young people, and I'm thinking, where have you been? <laughs> You know, um, I, I knew I knew out of the six, probably four, and um, I, I knew that they were all about you know strong chains. Like they were working, working feverishly in their in their groups. The first the first cohort um, consisted of um, Roshan Khan, uh, Onika, uh, Venus Prasad, um, Hubert, and. Ryan. No missing. And Ryan. 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 And Ryan Hoppy. Um, these these guys, when I sat in that room and we were all humble enough to know when to take lead of the discussion and then fall back. There were, there was no room for ego. There was no room for, you know, making an impression. Shapers are very hard people to impress. <laughs> That's one thing. Because everybody is coming from from such from such a very strong authoritative platform, but we're humble enough to know when to just sit back and listen and to be led. So it was at that point where I realized that okay, this is a, this is a group that I needed to be a part of from a very long time um, ago, and I, I hope to be here for as long as I'm allowed um, up until my age limit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Up until, until the age limit kicks in. Um, so, part of the criteria for becoming a member, being a member, if I if I understand correctly, is that that individual must be doing something of note in their lives. Correct. Yes. Yes. Very correct. Okay. I l l let me let me create this situation here. You're in a classroom, mm -hmm. and introduced to I, I guess calculus I mean I'm taking you guys far back 
And but there's and everybody have been doing well so far with algebra and trigonometry. So and here comes Mr. Calculus with his differential, differential and differentials and inter integrals and all this. But some of your friends are not weren't too quick to catch this. So they're kept, you know, they're often lagging behind. In that environment, would you not want to assist them to keep up with the rest of the class? Yes, most, most definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, so. so with that premise, do you believe that the shapers would be, um, should be more inclusive for with those who may not be doing stellar work with their lives, but you know, they're just at the cusp. And perhaps perhaps the dynamics within the shapers can help to bring them over that ledge. Do you believe that that, that is possible or do you believe that that should be the case? Well, um, that is possible. And I would go as far as to say that we presently have a group called Friends of the Shapers. And the Friends of the Shapers group would be individuals who probably did not qualify to join the group or haven't reached an age limit or they can't commit fully, but they would come on board when we have projects and we can call them out to assist in whatever ways we can. But we also try to do projects that would impact their section of society as well. And we, we always encourage them, even though you might not have been accepted into the hub, still feel free to come and volunteer with us, still free they'll feel free to work along with us as we're doing our projects, as we're reaching out to different communities. Onika, you, you're from Linden. I want to ask you the same question I asked Sandra. How would you feel if there was a similar hub in Linden? What would that mean to you? If I must be honest. Um, please do. Please be honest, Onika. Ah, is this, is this PG-13? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. No, Anyhow, um, what I'd say is that the Global Shapers community is one thing, but being a Lindener and seeing young people work, I don't necessarily think that we have to get a hub to be able to self-mobilize and to be able to do things because every time I go back to Linden and I meet young people and I talk to them and I see what they're doing with the limited resources that they have or with the few opportunities that they have, I, I see that, you know what, even if there isn't a hub, these young people are way outpacing some of them in Georgetown who might have all of the schools at their disposal. But what, what if there were? What, what if there were a hub, though? How, would it, how do you think the presence of a hub would benefit? Um... I remember when I first came to the Shapers, my third or fourth question was, how soon can we have a hub in Linden? <laughs> because I realized that the community itself, the international network that you're connected to, mm -hmm. the network of leaders from across society, from not only your race or your economic background, it opens your eyes to a whole lot more. Being in Linden, you're sort of shut out from a whole lot of things and you only know what you read in the papers or what you hear your NDCs or your parents tell you. And having something like this in Linden that is connected to something else, I think it will greatly help them to open their eyes more to the wider world and experience a little more of what we have happening and to be a little more accepting of other people. I know to be able to express themselves but not let others feel as though we are here to destroy the world. Because oh. a lot of people have that impression of us. How, how, how does each of you feel you have grown as leaders or, or your leadership skills have grown being part of the hub uh, maybe sandra would like to go first okay sure for me um like i said i've aimed confidence mm -hmm. and um i feel that you know wonderful people they motivate me like when we do projects and i see that um how successful our projects are it gives me this sense of motivation and 
I know that I can, you know, I can also, if I should be put in a situation where I, you know, have to be a leader, I have to uh, spearhead a project on my own, I, ha I have confidence that I can make it. So, yeah. And, and when did you realize, when did you realize this? At, at what point did you realize, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not the Sandra I used to be. I am even more confident and I'm willing to step out there and take chances. When did this happen? When did you realize this? Well, let me see. Uh, actually, it was the first uh, project that I went on. We went to the interior. Like, like I said, I'm very much connected to the interior. And um, when I saw the happy faces of these little kids and I was able to stand up and say that I'm from Paramount Toy and um, I'm part of this group called Global Shapers and I, 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 I knew that I was part of the project and it being a success. It really gave me this sense of, you know, I don't want to say pride, <laughs> but um, it, it gave me this sense of confidence like i said mm -hmm. that that I, I i am there i am different i am part of change and i can effect change i am curious you know whenever there's something new it's usually questioned uh and i, I haven't well i have been in the, out of guyana very long but it's any any society it's usually questioned any community it's usually questioned is it good what does this mean and so on has any one of you ever encountered any sort of pushback about being a member of Global Shape? Uh, Selwyn, I think it's it's a good time to tell you now that I, I was a pushback. You were yes, a pushback? Before, yes, yes, before I, I became a part of this family, the Georgetown Hub, <laughs> I was a major critic. I was like, Yafet was the one uh, who <laughs> approached me about joining the Hub. And then it was followed by, he was followed by our founding curator, Safa George. And, you know, Yafra is like, you know, Sarah, go check this out. Good thing, I think, you know, you're needed here. And I was like, well, Yafra, I haven't heard of you all. I, I Googled you, I see barely anything on the Georgetown Hub. What is there to recommend you? And I was very, very critical of the Hub. But then, you know what, Selwyn? One day I opened my eyes and I learned a very important lesson. I realized that criticism by itself would do nothing and that my efforts are worthless standing on the outside criticizing a group. So if I wanted to see what the group was capable of and to ensure that the group was capable of something, guess what? I hopped right in. So my pushback, you know, has been answered and I'm here I am. Siri, you see you see why I don't leave you alone, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um so that that's it. Anybody else have had any experience, any negative comments about the hub? From um, outsiders, from from the very beginning, you always get these sort of comments and, and questions about anything new in in Georgetown, um, uh -huh. and especially you know the, with the influx of all of these international groups that are doing this and doing that, and you know all, all we seem to be doing is just dividing and dividing and dividing even more, and we have several groups for the same cause. That, that hardly work together um, or don't even know how to work together or don't even know that the other exists. So at, at first, um, you know, you and and it's not something that you just walk around and say, you, you, you know, I'm a global player, you know. No, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. But when when people become curious in the group and they ask the questions, as, as, as Sarah rightly asked at first when, when I first um, told her about it, well, what are you guys doing? You know, um, so what's the purpose of this group? And then to be labeled as another elitist group of of these special young people that that have nothing to do with the regular youth, in, um, you know, on the street. And you know, as Sarah can attest, uh, I'm sure all of the other people can attest to the fact that uh, those are the people that we're actually lobbying for. Mostly, those are the people that we're always thinking about and trying to find a way to empower them them to understand that there's there's more to life than than the struggle of surviving on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. so it, the, the resistance was always you know this 
is this going to be another group that is just going to have a title, you know, to feel um, empowered and entitled to, to some sort of international body and just walk around the place with a chip on the shoulder? Um, I don't want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, our response to that is always, you know, look at what we do, you know. Um, you know, let our projects, let, let, our, let our decisions, let our projects, let our or whatever media, media fronts that we have, let that tell the tale. You decide whether you want to be a part of the change or not. Yafet, I, I'm going to take a break here. But when we get back, I'm going to list uh, some projects that you guys have been involved in. And tell me what resonates with you as I, as I list them. And, and I want to ask you this, Yafet, is your... Do you have this show torn on on another computer or some, something? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. J- I'm just checking. Sure. <laughs> All right. We are in crisis socially, politically, economically. Mm-hmm. And it is frightening because no one feels safe. Once you have the level of poverty that we have in our country, once there isn't a distribution of the wealth or opportunity to gain access to a better lifestyle, no one is safe. Mm -hmm. Because you see, poverty breeds, and greed also, breeds what you call a sense of... All right, we're back with the lovely Global Shapers. Yafet, I, as, I, as I mentioned before the break, I'm going to read the list of, a list of projects you guys did in 2014. Hold on a second. Sorry. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. One, human rights awareness campaign that's through social media. Launch Save the Libraries, building a library and reading program in Sophia. Head Start Stationary Drive, supplying over 500 hinterland students with back-to-school material, including backpacks, pencils, erasers, notebooks, and more. Ultimate Communications Workshop, 2014. Peace Day Outreach, taking clothes and medical supplies, personnel, into St. Cuthbert's, along with the S4 Foundation, participated in international coastal cleanup, participated in Habitat for Humanity's Pedestrian Crossing Painting. When you hear those projects, how does that resonate with each of you? Were you part of it? Um, I can speak for a couple of them, especially the first, the Human Rights um, Project. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was actually the champion of that project, um, the online initiative. Uh, the others, uh, we were all part of, you know, part and parcel with planning and all that, um, pulling it together. So each of these, each of these projects would resonate um, on a personal and a collective level because we've all, you know, had hands on, um, all pitched in our ideas. We all broke it down, tore it apart, built it, you know, built it back together to make sure that it works. And, and we can actually see some amount of um, impact. We can actually see some outcomes and move along from there. Mm-hmm. And any, any of you, Syria, Onika, Sandra? Have yes, you got- I, was part, I was part of the, um, the stationary drive, the ultimate communications workshop and currently with the Save the Libraries um, project. Um, For me, so far, um, like I said, the the success of these projects, they have really um, put me in a direction to continue working um, with the rest of the shapers. And at the moment, uh, with the State of the Libraries project, I'm also a volunteer with um, Red Band-Aid. So what I would be doing is going into the community and aiding the, the students to, to, to read. So, um, so far, it 
has been in my interest, especially dealing with young people. And um, I am happy so far with the outcome of these projects, and I, I hope that it continues to be successful. Awesome. How, how would you say, what, what would you say um, you have discovered about yourselves having been a member of Global Shapers? Let's start with you, Anika. So you want to get me emotional. Um, for me, I, my, my moments, my, my moments, too. They've happened and they're continuing to happen all the time. During the first year when I joined the hub, I questioned myself. I wondered if I was in the right place, if I was even worthy enough to be here and to work along with the other young people that we were working with. Not because I was the youngest in the group, but um, because i was never a part of something so big something that was way beyond me and during the first couple of months they had this crazy idea during elections to elect me as their curator now i was already questioning myself as to whether or not i belonged and then they they decided to take me and put me to lead them in our first year when we haven't even set ourselves when we haven't even decided what our image would have been or anything and um during that first year being curator and planning the first few projects and writing our charter and just learning from everyone in the group i feel so much more sure of myself right now when I'm away from the group, I don't know. I have never had this feeling from anywhere else. But when I'm away from the group, I feel as though part of me is missing. Not because of who the people are, but what we represent in society. I feel hope for Diana because the people in the group, I can tell you, we have disagreements all around. We 100% of the folks will never agree on anything or everything, I should say. But when we put our heads together to work on projects, it's amazing to see how we'll put our differences aside. And we will not worry that uh, my shoe is green and your shoe is blue, or I come from Linden, which might be the best part of Guyana, and you're from Barbies. But, you know, we decide that we want to work together because we want to impact we want to have a positive impact in our society and that alone just it gave me a whole lot of hope for the future of where we're heading not because of this one group alone but because of the amount of people that we're coming into contact with every day talking to somebody and telling them about what we do they don't we don't need them to follow us we don't need them we don't ever want to say we want to have a fan club where everybody's talking about the shapers and they know Yafet and they know Onika and they know Sandra or Sarah we want them to realize is that the work we're doing as young people is we're, we're doing it because one we love Guyana two we're patriotic three we want to change the way things are done and four it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you think. As long as you believe you can do something good, then all you need to do is come together and agree on what that good is, and then start working. And over time, I have found myself, I, when the year started, I said to everyone, I feel as though I'm at peace. And what I want to do for others, because of what the group did for me, is to share what I have, not necessarily financial things, but in terms of, you know, talking to young people, helping them to realize that it might look dim now, but that doesn't mean that your future has to be like this. You can change what you're seeing in front of you, and you can decide where you want to go on the path you want to walk. And it, it doesn't have to be where your parents are telling you to go out. No, I'm not telling children to drop out of school and, you know, to start gangs, but I say to them, make a scene, but make a scene about something good. So 
for me that that is what has happened since you know uh, being what, a part of the shippers and taking part in projects and uh, what about you sarah what have you discovered about you also and um having been around all of these amazing people uh first thing i learned about myself was that i was uh too bullheaded one and second is that i lacked humility to a large degree so i've only been with the shapers uh since last august i believe sandra and i joined at the same time yeah we were we, we entered the hub at the same time and within just a couple of weeks observing people uh looking especially at, at gregory Shaw, at, at some point his words uh you can show me some love by letting me support you they they, they sunk in and and they came to me you know they, they they came to mean something far far bigger to me so i've been able to more or less shape myself within this hub and to become a, a better me and and while we're, we're here i want to address you know our leadership style now the the hub doesn't take people you know the criteria that the hub sets for taking people that criteria is not there to exclude anyone it's it's not at all but rather it's it's there to take people and put them on the back lines so those weaker people in your analogy in your example who are lagging behind as leaders we recognize that we've got to take the back line and help those people get to the front because in the end what we're trying to do is to get everyone to become the best person the best Guyanese that they can be and and that there is it selling and Sandra I want to I want to tweak this question in a little differently what do you tell your what do you tell the young people or the young children when you return home when you visit home what do you tell them about the shapers well like I said up there uh, you don't have access to news uh, on a regular basis so basically people are unaware of global shapers they've never heard of it but um, I was back home in September last September October I can't remember but I did go to the school and um, I told them about global shapers I told them about the the, the shapers, the other shapers, what we are involved in, the positive things that we contribute to society. And I also tell them to aim in that direction, always aim to be better, to have an education because education is like a really important thing up there as well. Um, even though it's not, some, some, some youths, they drop out of school because of you know various reasons. So I always try to tell I always tell them to be involved in positive things, in meaningful things. Um, but I haven't we haven't done any project in that region as so I guess that's one of the reasons why as well they don't know about us. But hopefully in the future what I want to do is um, introduce the global shapers to the region. Uh, probably do a few projects in there and you know let them see how young people can you know do things and contribute meaningful to society and probably see us as role models um, mm -hmm. not in us exactly but you know shape their own little future by seeing us do work thank you and, and Yafet what have you learned about yourself uh, what have you discovered about yourself as number one, but also Do you get a sense that? Young people I mean, I've, I've listened to um, Onika just now and this the sense I'm getting and what I think that she said in, 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 in the message that she um, Delivered is that young people are looking for something positive to be part of and it can have well, you know, let me let you say, tell it. First, answer me this, though. What have you discovered about yourself? And then the other part of the question. Right off the bat, I've discovered that I can be a very good listener. And on top of that, that I have a hell of a poker face when I'm listening to something that I don't necessarily agree with, but I can find a way to push it forward 
just to see it from a different perspective how did you find this out Yafet? <laughs> this is this is this is clearly through the resistance okay okay go I, ahead i'm sorry you know i always gotta poke you a little bit <laughs> and the discussions that we have so um i've i've learned to look at things um three-dimensionally mm-hmm. uh, through the shapers because you you have no you have no choice but to look at things differently when you're in such a group um you would always have your perspective you would always have your beliefs but someone else is going to be looking at that same thing and seeing something totally different and and bringing a very pertinent point um of of you know making that happen so i've learned that um apart from that your second question the the underprivileged youth the typical underprivileged youth in Guyana um does not have the access um to these to these projects and these things that we're talking about all of these lofty ideas that we're talking about as shapers or as a global community um so our our mission really is to get past because if you're going to say let's do this and you know let's 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 talk about this stuff through the newspapers or, or talk about it on radio and talk about it on television the people that we really want to impact and and the people that we really want to change they don't have they don't have access to that mm-hmm. so our our you know the mission is is a whole lot bigger and we don't have enough foot soldiers at present to really get into the communities and make the impact that we that we want to make um through the initiative of friends of shapers and 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 collaborations with other organizations and stuff like that that are like minded uh, to the shapers, you know, it's a matter of honing in resources now to to pull these things together and make it work. And and we all know too well how hard resources are to come, you know, to come by. Um, we we found rather creative ways to to raise funds um, to pull off the projects that we've been able to pull off. Some some other projects have been parked because we just don't have enough resources and we just don't have enough. Um, support and of course I'm talking about financial support in order to make the impact that we really want to make. Mm-hmm. So um, it's it's a daily process where we're we're working towards being on the ground and and making sure that our message is not just bottled or held back because you know through the newspaper or through or through the radio or or internet and all these things because the average, the, the typical person that we're trying to get to, to get that message to, um, does not have that access. So we have to reach them eye to eye. What gives, you, what gives you hope, each of you? What gives you hope? If I may, seeing that I have the microphone right now. Um, yes, sir. It's, it's, it's looking around to my brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. you know, looking to my left and looking to my right and seeing these other young people that have Guyana's best interests at heart and are working, you know, come hell or high water in order to make it happen. And you, you Sarah? Um, it's, it's about the same thing that, that Yafet has said, you know, once upon a time, I said that when I look to my left and I look to my right, I see nobody beside me. And even when I look behind me, I so, see nobody there either. So is there really anybody who wants to fight? For Guyana. And now today, when I look on either side of me, in front of me, behind me, I'm surrounded by people who care and who share this, this passion for our country. So nothing less than that would, you know, keep me anchored where I am. Bonica, if if you could make one recommendation to help improve the, the lives of young people in Guyana. What would that be? Um, it will be a two-part recommendation. One, whatever negativity you would have heard before from your parents, from your aunts, from your colleagues, or, ne- or negative sentiments towards Ghana, towards moving forward, take it out of your mind, put it in a bin, and just light it to fire, and then throw that away. And then believe in yourself that you can actually do something. 
many times I talk to people and they'd say, me alone, I can't do nothing. I, it's just one body. But what I try to tell people, if I have that attitude, I, I'll talk to someone else, they might have had a little bit of hope. But then I go with that negative talk and I go with my mindset weighing down whatever it is that they are trying to do, they too will think like that. There is a whole lot of good that can come from positive thinking and positive actions. Yes, we learn from our past, but we should not dwell in it. And as young people, I'd always encourage them. What happened in the past? It's not for us to dwell in it and to continue to blame people, but it's for, for us to learn what not to do, learn what to do, and how best to move forward. Believe in ourselves, know that if we just put our heads and hands to it, we can think up, think up solutions for problems we're having right now in society. How do you personally encourage other young people to join the hub? Well, Personally, um, as it relates to joining the hub, I have been having this conversation with a few people from time to time. And they always say, you know what, I, I don't have enough time, I don't think I'm worth it, or whatever. But I try not to force it too much if folks want to join. We want folks who are committed to the cause, yes, but that doesn't mean you're not committed to changing Guyana. And what I try to tell them, even if you're not a part of the hub or you decide not to join, still play your part, still do your role. The Georgetown Hub is one group of young people, but you can still do something wherever you are, whatever it is you're doing in your community. Get somebody else like yourself, and we're two are working together instead of one, the impact can be great. Asandra, what, what was the hardest or the most difficult challenge to overcome being a member of the Hub? Um, I had to think about that one. <laughs> but I think, I, I like what um, Yafet yeah, said, we, we have difficulty in, in, in terms of financial funding and all of that. The, for instance, the stationary drive, um, we had a budget, but going and seek funding from different businesses, from different organizations, that was a challenge. But we still managed to do our best as shapers, and we, 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 we delivered, we delivered our project. Congratulations. How can the diaspora help? <laughs> Best for help um, well, by supporting us financially, <laughs> or um, and yeah, how where, where, uh, would, where would they if, contact you? If, if I can add a little bit more outside of the financial support, yes, yeah. I think for the, the sheer number of Guyanese living outside and the sheer talent that they have living outside. You can support us financially. We do have a bank account. It's at the Scotia Bank of Ghana. Um, it's a really long account number. We can't go it right now, but we have a Facebook page. You can just search for the Georgetown Hub Global Shapers Community and you'll find us. But um, by supporting Ghana, this is just my personal view. I know many persons might not want to come back home, but you can visit or use your connections to persons you know here and you know try to encourage them or try to get them to not only think positive but to try to change the things that we're doing in society every day you open the papers you'd see one thing or another one thing bad and we we have a way of reporting what's bad like we have no issues with that that could be done perfectly mm -hmm. We, we want to encourage people to start highlighting things that are good. Find a child in a community that you can sponsor to go to university. You might have a whole lot of resources there that you take for granted that somebody here would not have. See how you can help those from the community you came from. You don't need to know everybody, but you can just start with one and let that grow. Let that expand from that one individual that you know. And encourage all the Guyanese citizens living abroad to do the same. Because many persons would say, 
you done gone as I did it. What I can do now. But you know, um, it starts from one simple act. Okay. Let's let's I, I, I'm glad you, you brought up the media. I, w I want you to answer this question when we return. When you, or I'll, I'll tell you, I'll ask you when I return. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. back with the lovely shapers the question i have for you Nico, is when you how does it resonate with you when you read or witness violence against anyone but especially young people um, i i am very extremely i don't know if i could stress i'm very traumatized by violence i i I seriously am violence of any any kind, and um, I don't saw folks. I'm a nonviolent person, but um, I feel as though I'm shaking just talking about it. Um, I I always try to figure out or understand what is what is it that would drive an individual to that extent to do something to someone else to cause such harm because is it that they think they're so different than the other person violence in any sort I, I see physical abuse sexual abuse verbal abuse and and I try to wonder where is that individual mentally financially what is going on because I, I don't know if they think it's the only way out 